Hi, and welcome to part three of my customizing Blythe series. Today I will cover the face up, eye chips, ogling, sleep eyes, gaze correction, and reassembly. There's lots to cover, so I'm going to start with the face up or coloring the face. I'm using my Winsor & Newton soft pastels. I like to make myself a palette just on paper or card and I label my colour names. I'm adding all the different colours that I think I might need. I use a scalpel blade and gently scrape some more dust into each of the colour piles. The face is already sprayed with a clear coat of varnish. I'm using this Humbrol varnish which is safe for plastic but it's not for using over acrylic paint. You could do your face up using acrylic paint and an airbrush or even pencils. There's all sorts of things you could use. In the last video you'll have seen me remove the eyelashes. I'm going to replace them with these which I bought online. I just cut one in half and trimmed it down to just the right size and when I'm ready I'll just put some glue over the opening and push them in with tweezers. These are some of the brushes I'll use. They're soft and quite flat or stubby. I'm also going to pick up a very small one later on. Okay, I'm going to start layering on the colour. It builds up very slowly so you're going to apply colour and spray a clear coat and then repeat again and again. Each layer is going to help build up and intensify the colour. It wouldn't be possible to do all your colouring in just one go. So I'm starting with the cheeks, using Burnt Sienna to start with. And I'm just starting to systematically darken and colour areas where I want them to be blushed. And I'm using this Indian red almost as a highlight. I'm changing the different shades of pink that I use with slightly darker shades used around the lips. You can barely see on camera but it is starting to build up and adhere to the primed surface. And by primed, I just mean the clear spray. It gives the pastel some tooth to hold on to. Now it's time to spray the face and leave it to dry. And now I'm building up the second layer, adding a little green where the skin would be quite thin by the eyes. It's surprising how many different colors there are in a face. I'm adding more reddish tones to the lips and trying to darken right into the crevices of the mouth. I'm just covering the same sort of areas again and again, building up the colours. Remember to look at your reference if you have some already. There's so many different ways you could paint the lips. You could have them quite soft and natural or more heavily made up. Here I'm trying to emphasize the chin and the cheeks again. I'm darkening the upper area of the eyes and it's time to spray again. While I wait for the face to dry I'm working on the back plate. Because the colours might end up looking quite differently if you build up the front of the face but not the back, I add colour around the ears and the cheeks. Here I'm back to the face again, building up another layer of colour. I'm darkening the top of the eyes but leaving the underside quite light emphasizing the shape of the nose and the little dips under the nose above the lips. Here's how she's looking so far. I also add a little color to the top of the face 
around the forehead and the sides. I use a large brush to brush away any loose pastel. And it's time to spray again. Now I'm getting out my watercolour pencils. They're Derwent Ink Tense pencils. And I'm going to add a little more detail into the lips with these. Just trying to create a more defined lip edge. And some vertical lines. Following the structure of the lips. Now I'm going back in with some more pastels. It can be difficult to reach into the crevice of the mouth, which is why I've got this very small brush now, darkening the nostrils. And it's time to spray again. Now you can see I've had a disaster. I had noticed some spluttering the last time I'd sprayed, which had given her face a sort of freckled appearance. But this time, the can completely clogged up and left this huge lump of spray in the middle of her face. Luckily, I was able to very gently scrape it away using a scalpel and I'm going to try and adapt. I had to think, what else do I have? What can I use? And I don't know if I would recommend it, but I thought I would try Mod Podge watered down and sprayed using my husband's airbrush. He wasn't home to stop me, so I thought I would have a little go. I just wasn't willing to wait for an online order of a replacement spray to arrive. I really wanted to get it finished. So I tested it on a painted 3D print and it looked good. Then I tested it on the back of the Blythe head and it's given it a really nice matte finish. It's a matte Mod Podge. And now I'm going to test with the, uh, well, this is a Call Erase pencil. I'm just going to draw my logo on the back. A lot of people who customize dolls will add very elaborate signatures to the back. Oh, and my light has gone out. So please forgive the difference in light here. And I wanted to try something else different this time, which is using gouache paints. Because they're completely water soluble, if you make a mistake, you can just wipe, wipe it away. Because you're building your face up and customizations up layer by layer, as long as you're happy with your previous layer, you won't be wiping that away if it's been sealed. So the same should be true for this Mod Podge. I'll put the date on as well. Not a very imaginative signature for me here, but it was just a quick test. So I'm going to cover it with the Mod Podge and test it with a wet paintbrush to be sure that it doesn't re-wet uh, re the paint underneath. So here we go. Yep, the paint hasn't reactivated and it's okay. My next test subject is the eyelids. Ha! The Mod Podge doesn't make the gouache go on very smoothly. It sort of balls up and doesn't want to lay flat. If you add too much, then it just flakes off. So I just keep playing around with it. I used a sponge to try and smooth out and mottle on the paint. And I was really just having a play. I decided to be brave and go for the lips. I haven't put Mod Podge on the face yet. So it went on, the paint went on really smoothly on top of the previous varnish coat. You can see what I mean about the freckling here while I play with the paint effect on the lips. I was actually quite happy because I would have painted freckles onto her anyway. I like to have some sort of texture on the skin and I have freckles myself, so why not? So I'm not making any efforts to get rid of the speckling on the rest of her face. I test out the eyelids in place here. 
and they're looking okay. I give them another test fit in place. You can see the sheen on the face. It's a little shinier than the varnish on its own, but it's still a matte finish. She looks kind of healthy. <laughs> now I'm using the gouache with the eyelids in place to paint on a couple of cute accents. I've never done anything elaborate on their eyelids before, and this certainly isn't elaborate, but I just wanted to do something a little different for her. Some people do geometric patterns, uh, flowery paintings, all sorts of wonderful things. Now I'm getting my watercolour pencils again, and although it looks green, this one is a brown, and I'm just eyeballing it, starting to draw in eyebrows. Again, this is personal preference, not everyone likes eyebrows on Blythe. They don't generally come with them, but a lot of customizers do add them. Now I wanted to go for quite a full eyebrow, quite a, a natural looking heavy brow. And I'm combining the pencil and the gouache. The gouache does activate the watercolour pencils, so beware of that if you're not expecting it. I check it from all angles. And I start to darken the eyebrows towards the farthest outward edges. And I try to blend them in so that they get lighter or thinner towards the middle of the face. I'm using my tiniest possible brush for the hairs. Here you see the, the beauty of using gouache paints is you can just wipe away anything you don't like with a damp, clean paper towel. I thought the eyebrows were too far out, so I've wiped them away and moved them further in, checking them upside down. And I'm adding some lighter strands of hair towards the middle and just having a good old play. Here she is so far. Here I'm jumping back to the eyelids and I'm just painting on with the same colour of purple some eyeliner. Again just eyeballing it and painting over what will be the visible portion of the eyelid. I also decided to paint the uh, the underside edge as well, in case it looks strange to have different colours when the eyes are the, when the eyelids are open all the way. Now I've come back to the eyebrows. There is a layer of Mod Podge over them, and now I'm just lightening again towards the centre, trying out different techniques using the sponge just to soften the eyebrows and here they are. I'm quite happy with them. Now I'm moving on to the eye chips. I'm going to have a little play to start with. I use this template to draw some pairs of circles and I'm just going to paint out some ideas. I already have a few pairs of eye chips you can see here, some I've made myself and there's a pair from the Mandy Cotton Candy doll with hearts in the pupils. An idea that I quite like and I'm trying it out in pink here. And some blue pupils and some yellow diamonds. Now here are all the pieces as they are. A quick test fit of the eyelashes, see how it all looks. And I've just cut out and pushed in the paint tests to see how I like them. I've chosen pink and blue. I'm using acrylic paint. I paint the blue pupils directly into the round pupil divot in the chips. You can tidy up the edges after they're dry by scraping off any excess. You can, of course, paint directly onto the eye chips. You can build them up in layers of detail. To attach them, I paint Mod Podge on to stick the coloured card to the eye chip which also holds the chip into the eye mechanism. Here are the four chosen eyes. The other two are printed out iris images onto paper that I glued onto a different type of blank that I bought in the past. They were completely flat and had black pupils already printed on. So I just glued them on in the same way. 
Now for the eyelashes. I apply Mod Podge again using a toothpick and I just push the eyelash in using tweezers. Be sure to let them dry well. Now, boggling the eyes. Remember how the eyes fit into the head? The upper eyelid edge meets this tab that sticks out, which stops the eyelid from going up too far when you pull the cord. If you want a more open lidded expression, you can carve away a small piece of eyelid here, like this one I already cut. Just carefully cut with a scalpel, only about one or two millimetres deep. If you cut too much, the lower lid will show this thin band that you see at the bottom of the eye, and it can be unsightly. Now when the string is pulled fully, the eyelid will rest higher. I'm going to reattach the original pull cord, which pushes from left to right here, and tie the knot on the right hand side. The next thing I'll do is to give her sleep eyes. To give her sleep eyes, we first add a second pull cord where the spring was originally attached. The sleep cord enables us to pull the eyelids closed instead of the spring keeping them open for us. The cord should be about the same length as your original pull cord made of nylon you can use a lighter to melt the ends so they don't fray and push through from right to left and tie the knot on the left hand side. I'm going to remove the original finger loop so that I can push the other end of the cord through the back of the head when I'm reassembling. Replacing the eyes. We put the eyes back into the eyelid mechanism like this, being very careful not to scratch your eyelids. There we go, just check that it still works. Now I'm going to very carefully, again because I don't know how strong this Mod Podge uh, version of varnish is going to be, I'm very careful not to scratch the lids and I keep my T-bar out and separate for now. We'll need that in a moment. Make sure the eyes are right. And I can't remember the best way to put this back in the head, so I'm just pushing it and, oh my goodness, I thought I had broken the eye mechanism here. Just about had a heart attack. I'm lucky I didn't swear. I did manage to get it in safely though, and I check the eyelids for damage. No scratches that are too obvious. I think there is a little nick on one eyelid though. Now, gaze correction. This changes how far upwards the eyes look. Some blithes have quite a downward facing gaze. We grab the T-bar, which comes from just below the eye mech, and using a scalpel, you just cut a millimetre or so off the tip, the end away from the screw. This is where the stepped sections here on the eye mechanism rest. If you cut too much, you're going to be able to see the next set of eyes at the bottom of the eyeball and it definitely doesn't look right. So only cut a little at a time and check the positioning from the front. Screw into place once you're happy. And we check the mechanism. Yep, I'm happy with the placement of the eyes here. And next we're going to feed through the cords. The sleep eyes cord goes out from the right hand side of the hole here, where the spring was originally attached. The original cord goes out here, same as before. And you can reattach your finger loop again. Now for closing the head, I put down something soft for the face so I don't get any scratches and first I will attach the scalp. Now I'm forgetting here that the screw can be screwed part way in before you try and slide the scalp on. 
because there's no way I would be able to get in to the front of the head with the back on. So after having a little bit of a panic about how to do this, I take off the scalp, which I really didn't need to do. Then I remember I can screw it in. I put the scalp back on. And as you can see, it's an open slotted part that slides into the middle of the screw. So you just slide it down, make sure the sides have connected and you can tighten it. Making sure your cords aren't tangled up or pinched inside, gently push the sides closed. You can see where the neck needs to sit into a notch on the inside. So just make sure everything's in place and gently, gently push the sides together. Now I don't think you can fully close the side seams until your screws are fully tightened. I was struggling. I start with the upper back screw, fully tightened, and now the side screws. You can see me struggling here until I realise that I need to tighten the screws. There we go. Now finally for this episode, the scalp join here, it can be glued closed, but I won't do this just yet. I want to see how the wig making process goes first. You can poke holes into the rubbery scalp and sew in new hair. I've done it before and I might cover it in a future video if I manage to get a spare scalp. So here she is so far. Compared to the before shot here, she's got so much personality already. I love the different eyes. Oh, and I have got a plan for her sleep cord finger loop. I just have knotted the end for now. You can see me pulling the original cord to change the eyes. And then you pull the sleep cord to lift open the lids. Thank you to everyone who's following this series and to all the new subscribers. I'm really loving all your comments and getting to know you guys. So thank you. I'm going to keep making these videos if you keep watching them. And I'll see you next time for the wig making. Bye!